think I know everybody here, but my name is Kathleen McMahon and I'm the Vice President for Cadet Leadership and Development. So welcome to the Inclusion Center. As you may recall, last March, we had the ribbon cutting right here uh, with many of the same folks that are here right now um, that have you know, really invested time and energy in uh, opening the Inclusion Center and making it successful. So I'm not sure everybody on campus and at Cal Maritime knows how important it is that we have spaces for student groups, student of, of different identity groups, of affinity groups, to have their own space so that they can create a sense of belonging and safety. And uh, this is just our first center at Cal Maritime. And we realize that that's not enough. Um, it has a, a broad name, the Inclusion Center, but the future holds potentially two or two or three more, right? So, um, yeah. But um, we really need to engage the community on what that looks like. So, um, events like this where we come together and talk and uh, share our different opinions about what our specific campus needs is really important. So a lot has happened since last March. Um, I wanna just really mention that some cadets have stepped up and they've um, really led the way on what this inclusion center should be, what should be happening here, what the vision is, and really creating the whole climate of what it's like inside these doors. In particular, our peer equity leaders, uh, which was a, a new leadership group that we identified last year, we are going to hear from this morning um, have had a huge role in shaping the vision and will continue to do that going forward and we are hiring one more peer equity leader um, and I want to thank the campus partners who have helped with sort of the programming and how we create um, the kinds of conversations that happen in this space um, Maddie Hamill who I don't see here our confidential advocate has been um, one of our campus partners who has been holding workshops in here about um, topics such as identity and gender fluidity and um, issues around sexual uh, orientation and um, sexual preferences and assault and all, all different kinds of um, conversations around consent. Um, also, Erica Nelson has been a partner, a new community member on campus who has been utilizing the space and envisioning some tutoring happening up here. Um, and then you're gonna hear from doctors Ian Wallace and uh, Aparna Sinha, who um, also have been collaborating and helping us figure out what should happen with the space. Uh, we are in the process of hiring a director of inclusion initiatives, a key role for the, it's a management level leadership role that will oversee this center and be part of the conversations going forward about what the future centers look like. They will also advise our student identity clubs and organizations, a very needed role on this campus to fully support and shore up um, our student groups. Um, the person will be a campus DE&I leader, um, both on the DE&I council, but also around community day and, and other important um, campus-wide events. Um, and they'll really help us chart the future for what this looks like in Cal Maritime. Um, and uh, so look out for those conversations. If you see emails or invitations to participate in a conversation about what future identity centers on lower campus should look like. Because we know it needs to be on lower campus, okay? And that is the plan. And lastly, but most importantly, I really want to thank Dr. Jennifer Metz. Uh, who has stepped up this fall. Uh, I reached out to her uh, because I knew she was a student-centered DE&I expert and leader on this campus, and I asked her to step up while we are in the process of hiring somebody. And, um, you know, she was all in and um, has been all in since we initiated that conversation. Um, so we have a, a short program this morning. Um, our goal was to get people up to the center and to start sharing their thoughts and ideas again about what this and future centers should look like. Um, but now I'm gonna turn it over to Jennifer Metz to share some thoughts. Well, thank you so 
so much. Can you hear me okay? Well, I'll be brief because we already have some wonderful primary information from Kathleen. So again, thank you all for coming. And indeed, last spring the Inclusion Center opened with you know, an overall aspiration to become a student center place for study, for recreation, programming, all focused on the diversity of this campus. And this fall, the center is working to live in to those aspirations. And with the enormous help of campus partners at all levels of the university, we're happy to share a little bit about what's going on with the work of the Inclusion Center. Bringing together the, the organizational logistics to make the center a destination for events has very much been a, a top priority for myself and for our student peer equity leaders, Leah Wazikowski and Ona Schaefer. We will meet in a moment. And our Pell students have been invaluable in streamlining our center's reservation system, provided publicity support, on-site help for events. They have helped ensure that the center has snacks and goodies for study groups and for visitors. They've organized formal and informal study groups among their peers. They continue to organize and decorate the space to make it their own. And they're here to lend an ear, conversation, and support for all who come by. Thank you both for the time and the care that you've spent here at the center and all you continue to do. And I know I say it all the time, but you are amazing. <laughs> And I also wanted to thank our many, many campus partners for ongoing support and collaboration this semester. Uh, let me please first and last thank Kathleen McMahon for being a fundamental source of support for this center's place on campus. The logistical, the financial support you and your office bring to the center is keeping it in existence. And your pledge of support to keep diversity programming incarnate at Cal Maritime is invaluable. So thank you so much. Dr. Ian Wallace and Dr. Aparna Sinha have selflessly devoted their time, work, and resources to help plan partnerships with CAPS and with GED programming on campus. They have helped coordinate the hiring process for that one more peer equity leader this semester, and I'll let them share more about their activities uh, in partnership with the Inclusion Center, but you are a full for the best. I have met and begun working with staff and faculty across the campus to begin partnerships with programming for study sessions, social events, talks and presentations, and training events to be hosted at the center. This month of October alone includes the last session we heard from our WEAVE Community Connect series hosted by Madeline Hamill. As part of our LGBTQ History Month, the center has supported National Coming Out Day, which we celebrated on Tuesday. We will be hosting a student-led, what we call LGBT Q&A on the 20th. Our coordinator for student academic support, Dr. Erica Nelson, will present some of her original research on the topic of lesbians in the 1920s and 30s uh, on the 26th. And in between, we have our weekly formal and informal study sessions, our regular meeting of the Gay Straight Alliance, and we're preparing to host new regular meetings for groups like the Women's Empowerment uh, Group as well. But as I, I finish this again above us, I wanna say thank you again to all my colleagues and my students for the ways that they've stepped in to make the center a place worth building, supporting, and growing as a place of permanency at Cal Maritime. So here's to the rest of the semester and the academic year. Thank you all so much. And I believe I'm inviting our peer equity leaders to come up and say a brief word. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, uh, my name is Leah, I'm one of the career students at the Center, and I've been here since the start, uh, I spoke at the opening ceremony last year. Uh, so, being here this entire time, I've really seen the Center grow, it went from a little uh, concrete floored box to what you see now today. And that wouldn't have happened without help from everyone on campus. I know everyone's gotten a huge thank you, but of course, uh, Amy McMahon and Ian Wallace and Dr. Metz and everyone else has been helping us so much. It's been absolutely awesome. Uh, we've really heard a lot of what we're doing this year. Uh, happy LGBTQ this week, everyone. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, we'll continue 
to do programs like that and really grow and fill out our schedule more and really invite as many people as we can up to the center. It's really hard for people to uh, come up here sometimes, but with all the programming and all the help that we've gotten, uh, we've definitely seen our visitation grow a whole lot more. So thank you everyone for coming here.
Marks here. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, at the Inclusion Center's Fall 2022 Open House. My name is Dr. Ian Wallace. I've been with Cal Maritime since 2013. As Director of Counseling and past Chair of DEI Council, inclusion has been a focus of my work since I started here. Uh, the understanding, empathy, and support of being truly inclusive is at the heart of positive mental health and well-being. CAPS counselors, including our newest counselor, Marie Ekmechgen, are dedicated to supporting and uplifting the diverse experiences of groups on campus and our campus community where they, there exist historical causes to health inequities. CAPS counselors foster discussions of race, class, gender, sexual orientation, and other identities to raise awareness, prevent harm, and improve the mental health of students in our community. Towards this aim, these aims, I'm excited to be part of this latest effort to improve campus climate by bolstering the Inclusion Center and helping it to evolve to a space that is not only safe and inclusive, but advances greater representation on campus and ends social inequities. These goals at this time are not without their challenges. Whether it is hiring, enrollment, or retention, Cal Maritime is at a critical juncture. Based on recent figures, since 2017, the recruitment and retention of students of color, particularly non-licensed track majors, has declined significantly. We continue to fall short of the campus strategic plan goals of enrollment of female students. Far from the critical mass 30% necessary to increase safety and other changes that are necessary. Finally, our staff DEI vacancies at this time are stalling our well-intended programs. We need an EOP coordinator the Chief Diversity Officer and Director of Belonging and Inclusion staff. Yet these challenges are not insurmountable. We have community that is rich in talent, diversity, drive, and potential. That's us. Um, and those who came before us, who made strides that improved campus climate, are counting on us to continue these efforts. So I encourage us to stay hopeful and to persist. So personally, to speak to my role here at the Inclusion Center, my specific efforts to support the Inclusion Center are related to supplies, logistics, and training. So as a manager of two grants, one from the CSU and one from the President's Mission Achievement Grant, they provide funding for supplies and training. Uh, supplies include decorations, technology, equipment. Um, I'm helping to plan training for the peer equity leaders. They'll focus on education and leadership and DEI. And also I do some web editing on the Inclusion Center website. So if you see any problems, please send it to me my way or suggestions. And upcoming, just so you know, CAPS is going to be involved with the Inclusion Center as well. We've, we're going to be involved in the following ways. Collaboration with Professor Sinha to provide CAP support for the Student Gender Empowerment Group. And then holding Let's Talk conversations in the Inclusion Center on race, class, gender, and other to relevant topics uh, that are timely and important to students. Finally, you might be asking yourself, how can I get involved? I'm glad you asked. Students, if you're interested in being a peer equity leader, come talk to us or send us an email. Anyone who's speaking here, you know, please inquire. Uh, staff, faculty, or students, you can host an event at the Inclusion Center by going to the website and completing the request. Um, to administrators and managers, consider your budget and different ways you can support and contribute to the Inclusion Center and the various activities that are going on. And lastly, to everyone, share your ideas with us about how to make the most of the Inclusion Center and all the opportunity and potential Wow, what an impressive group of folks that are dedicated and passionate about all our inclusion efforts on campus. I am I feel so blessed to have these types of campus partners and people invested in the work. Uh, it makes me feel incredibly hopeful. Especially to see the sort of faculty and, and staff and student collaboration on something that we all care so deeply about. So that's also why you're here. So that's the end of our program. And what we'd like to do is invite you inside and to start you know, talking with each other about how you can contribute. Dr. Wallace just offered some great sort of prompts. Come on in, have a snack, and um, let's keep the conversation going. And all of us who spoke are can like be receiving your thoughts. So just give them to us and we will um, receive them um, with a lot of gratitude. Uh, so thank you for taking time out of your day today. It's lovely, what a beautiful group of folks. And um, let's all go inside, thank you.